Republican Kevin Kiley is the new representative for California's third congressional district and one of the nearly 80 new House members of the 118th Congress. He told C-SPAN about his candidacy in California's 2021 gubernatorial recall election, his views on the role of government, and his previous work in the state legislature. Well, I've spent the last uh, six years as a member of the California uh, State Assembly trying to bring some uh, sanity uh, to the beautiful state uh, of California. Uh, and, uh, you know, previously I worked as a criminal prosecutor. Um, I was an attorney in private practice uh, fighting for uh, small businesses and defending the Constitution in our courts. And uh, I actually began my career as a high school teacher uh, teaching 10th grade English in inner city L.A. Why a teacher? Well, after college, you know, I was looking for a way to really have uh, an impact in a very uh, immediate way. And my mom was a teacher, uh, and, uh, you know, I've always been drawn uh, to education. And so I was able to uh, begin teaching right away through a program called Teach for America, uh, which places uh, recent college graduates uh, in underserved communities. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I uh, received a teaching credential as I began uh, the process of, uh, of being a, a 10th grade teacher. I taught at a school called uh, Manual Arts. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was a school where uh, there were a lot of challenges uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the reading level that students were at, for example, was uh, on average fifth grade uh, by the time, uh, you know, they entered my 10th grade class. And so, uh, you know, that experience really uh, opened my eyes in a lot of ways. Uh, to the challenges we face in public education, in assuring educational equity, educational opportunity, uh, in trying to overcome the achievement gaps that are as wide as our state as just about anywhere uh, in the country. And so um, that experience very much informed uh, my uh, role as vice chair of the uh, education committee in our state assembly. And uh, we'll do the same here as I'm now going to be a member of the education and workforce uh, committee in Congress. What did you learn about yourself? being a teacher? <laughs> well, I learned how to be patient. <laughs> you know, uh, I taught 10th uh, graders where there uh, isn't really any limit on class size. So I would teach a class with about 40 students sometimes. I was in a portable, fairly small room. It's 10th graders, so you know, uh, that age, uh, uh, kids can present some interesting uh, scenarios that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, uh, I really learned uh, how to be patient, and I think that has served me well as I've entered the world of politics as well. Why are you a conservative? Well, I tend to believe that uh, decisions are made closest to the folks that they affect. And really, the lifeblood of our communities are, uh, you know, family, uh, families and uh, small businesses and uh, service organizations, faith organizations. These are the things that make a community tick. And so I tend to believe that the role of government uh, should be one that uh, aims in as much as possible to allow the decisions that drive community life uh, to uh, take place within those institutions. And to the extent the government needs to be involved, it should be at the level that's closest to the folks that it affects. And so the school board level, the level of the city council, the board of supervisors, and the state government should really just be dealing with issues of state concern, and the federal government should really be doing, dealing with issues of federal concern. And I think that's important for a lot of reasons. And perhaps most of all, it's really what this country was about from the beginning is self-government, giving each individual citizen uh, a hand in our uh, shared political destiny and the way to do that is not by centralizing political power in far-off capital buildings it's by allowing for uh, decisions to be made in a way that is accessible to the folks who are affected do you have a political mentor or someone you want to model yourself after well I'd say there's quite a few uh, you know kind of uh, depending on which way you look at it Abraham Lincoln is always a safe answer right <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, you know also just uh, a number of uh, our, uh, our founders, uh, whether uh, you know, that's uh, uh, Jefferson, uh, Hamilton, Madison, um, and the sort of idea of, of self-government that was really the great American uh, innovation that they not only uh, you know, uh, sort of installed uh, in this country via uh, the Constitution and, and uh, explicated in their various writings, but then uh, instantiated as, as statesmen in the early days of the Republic, uh, that's sort of the I think guiding star of my political philosophy. Uh, I think in many ways that idea of self-government is one that we have drifted from uh, as a country over the years and decades and centuries, uh, but I think it's one that we do well to return to uh, as much as possible in this century. 
is there someone or something you were looking forward to doing here in Washington? Well, there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to doing here uh, in Washington. Or someone you were looking forward to meet. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, there's a number of uh, members of, of Congress that I admire and that I've uh, enjoyed getting to know. Uh, but, you know, really, I'm here to do a job, uh, and that's to help our country get back on track. Uh, at the time I was elected, which is just a couple months ago, uh, you know, we were seeing record levels of dissatisfaction on the part of the public with the direction of this country. When it comes to the economy, uh, when it comes to the border, when it comes to crime, when it comes to the accountability of our government, uh, when it comes to our education system. Uh, and so I'm really here to, to fight for change, uh, to get us back on track. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm interested in meeting and working with anyone on both sides of the aisle uh, who I can find common ground with to make that happen. In 2021, you were a candidate for governor during the California recall election. Tell us why. Well, in 2021, you know, we had uh, this extraordinary movement of uh, citizens throughout California uh, that had come together to produce the single largest, peti largest petition drive uh, ever in United States history, uh, where you know we had just been in the midst of the most severe lockdowns of any state in the country. California had the most extreme business closures, had the most extreme school closures, had the most extreme church closures. So even if you look at a New York or some of these other states, this wasn't just a debate about whether lockdowns are right or wrong. This was about why is California the very worst, the very most extreme in every single respect. And citizens had been denied sort of their ability to actually take part in government at all, uh, as we had what many considered to be a uh, centralization of authority in the hands of the governor. And so the recall became an instrument to sort of fight back and to reassert uh, the, the, uh, the agency of citizens uh, in our democracy. And, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it also became an, a moment to sort of reflect upon the direction of California as a state, where this used to be the state where anyone could get ahead. Everyone wanted to move there. Now it's the state that so many can't wait to leave behind. It's the most popular state in the country to leave because of soaring costs of living, the highest poverty in the country, huge amounts of inequality, a failing public education system, uh, by far the worst homelessness in the country, soaring crime rates. And so I do think it became sort of a referendum on the fundamental failures of California government. For a variety of reasons, you know, the recall did not ultimately succeed in its uh, immediate objective, but I think it did exceed, succeed in bringing a lot of public awareness to those issues and getting citizens more involved in government. And I think that movement has only continued to grow to this day.